Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 again, back from another trip to my local thrift store. And I picked this bad boy up, and if you haven't guessed already what it is, it is an old handspring uh, palm, um, you know, palm pilot, palm computer. And I got it, as you can see, for $1.90, so not too shabby at all. So let's uh, open this guy up, see if it works, and see what is inside. And this is one of the uh, monochrome ones. Um, comes in this jazzy, uh, you know, clear blue uh, casing, and they really like their staples here. This is not coming out. It'll probably be easier opening it than getting these stupid staples off. Okay, there we go. So, now that we have that open, more staples. I don't care. I'll rip them. Okay. So, USB dock. Uh, pretty cool, I guess. Um, don't know if I'll use this exactly. Might play around with it, mess around with it. I have two other palms, color screen ones, newer ones, but uh, we'll see. Just um, a little tiny uh, circuit board in there. And it looks like it just passes through the, uh, the USB signaling through these uh, connector pins here. And a little sync button. That's about it. Put that to the side. We've got software CD. Uh, probably not going to use that, so whatever. And the Palm Pilot itself, which has this pretty snazzy uh, cover here. But as you can see, it's in pretty good condition, actually. It's a Palm Visor. I think this was before it was named Palm. It was still Handspring. Uh, let's see if I can find a date code here. No date code, but um, I'm going to grab some AA bat or AAA batteries and see if this fires up. So I'll be right back. Just grab some AA or triple. Why do I keep saying AA, AAA batteries from my Game Boy Pocket? And let's stick them in to see if it powers on. Oh, it is uh, booting up right there. Let's see. Oh, the stylus is right in here. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, clear with some metal here. But yeah. Just calibrating the uh, screen here. Might see if I can modify this. <laughs> it's uh, The set date is January 2nd, 1999. Probably tells you around when this was made. Yep. And... The interface is actually almost identical. I should clean off the screen. Uh, to my color palm pilots, um, the only difference being it's in black and white, obviously. It's monochromatic. But, uh, yeah. Looks pretty cool. Um, this one I don't believe has... I don't know. It has a compact flash slide here, but um, no SD card, which is... Eh. But, um, you know, back then, uh, SD cards were still, you know, not the uh, majority. But uh, other than that, pretty cool. It all seems to work. So uh, let's get straight on into the teardown. Enough of me yammering. Okay, first off, take out the batteries. I believe... Um, Palm no longer makes Palm Pilots, I'm pretty sure, actually. Um, which is, eh, I kind of, uh, saw that coming. Oh, uh, and look, uh, my screwdriver is not going to fit, so I'm going to have to go and find another one, which will. So I'll be right back, sorry. Found one that should fit. And it does. Uses just, uh, what is this? I don't think it actually says, but it's a small Phillips driver. And two screws on the bottom. Keep them safe. Take this off. Two more on the top in the uh, compact flash bay. I actually wonder if I could plug in, um, if the, it'll work with, um, I have some micro drives. I might try that just for fun. That I pulled some, from some iPod minis. So see if that works 
That'd be awesome. But I kind of want to see if this will run uh, like Game Boy emulators or whatnot, just because I can. Like original black and white Game Boys. So let's take the stylus out so we don't lose that. You got your IR window here, which is, uh, was pretty snazzy. That was the Bluetooth of the age. <laughs> you got power button, up, down, and then various shortcut buttons, as well as your home button, your touchscreen area, which they had rudimentary uh, handwriting recognition, software, calculator search, uh, options menu. Uh, looks like if you tap in the corner here, you can adjust the contrast, and that's pretty much it. I remember seeing this. Uh, in the translucent, translucent colors when this came out, I thought that was pretty cool. Came in uh, different colors as well, but uh, I would have been happy to have this, you know, back in the day. But now it's pretty much useless <laughs> compared to what my phone can do. So it looks like there's several um, clasps uh, locking the clamshell design. So let's see if we can hopefully uh, open this without damaging it. Oh, that's rather easy. <laughs> okay, pretty much just fell apart. And lift up the screen slightly, there is a ribbon cable there. So, I'm going to need to get in there. There's a zip connector. And I need to pull out the locking tabs. Come on. Oops, pulled it out a little too far. Oh, it pulls up. Never mind. Oops. Oh, it doesn't look like I damaged the connector. That is interesting. Rather than pulling out, you actually just flick this upwards and it pulls out that way. And so. Already you can see that, hopefully this comes out, yeah, it does. There's a little uh, plastic tab in this corner, you can just slightly pull out the uh, casing and this will pull right out. I wonder if this has a backlight actually, I never really checked, gotta clean the screen up. But uh, you can see the uh, four wire uh, resistive uh, touch screen, it's all these guys use resistive touch screens which were great for accuracy compared to capacitive, but they're very annoying because they rely on pressure, not touch, in order to sense. On the back here, we can see the uh, the column and the row driver ICs on the flex cable uh, that are mounted to the, um, they're heat mounted onto the actual LCD glass itself. And you can just see that they're just soldered onto this uh, daughter board here. And we could see some um, resistors, uh, decoupling caps. Let's see what else. We could see two ICs, a um, LP324. Um, I'm pretty sure if that is, it, it, I can see the National Semiconductor uh, symbol there, so it's probably a, um, a 324 quad op amp, I believe. And over here we have a on semiconductor. I love how I can actually focus with this camera. An on semiconductor uh, PAW040. No idea what that does, but <laughs> I know interestingly they soldered uh, the mid frame, the metal mid frame, they soldered it to the board here. And it looks like, I want to say yes, it does have an EL electroluminescent backlight. You notice this greenish color and these two tabs right in here. Which makes me think that maybe this chip. Um, is actually the inverter chip that steps up the voltage to drive the backlight which is uh, pretty cool actually if that is true and interestingly enough the touch uh, touch connector only has four pins and yet it has this massive 18 pin conduct, uh, connector of which only four of the pins are actually used so it's whatever they had on stock at hand you know but uh, that's, I'm not going to go any deeper into this. I don't want to wreck it. I actually would like to kind of use this for nostalgia factor and whatnot. So let's put that back in here. And there it goes.
pretty cool. And there's just this little connector here, which uh, plugs into the main board right in here. And you'll notice it's interesting. The uh, main buttons are actually kind of separate from the screen and the uh, main board here. There's just a little connector in here if I can get in. Just a uh, inner board connector. And there appears to be a microphone. That is, um, there's a rubber molding that just goes into the, uh, the chassis there. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Oh! It appears to have a battery backup for the uh, real-time clock, the RTC. Right in here, which is a 5.5 volt, 0.1 farad, uh, which was probably very impressive for the day, but with modern super caps, you can get in the uh, multiple farad region, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, you'll notice the two connectors for the uh, AAA battery and the uh, dock uh, port right in there. And that's pretty much it. All that goes through this little high-density Molex connector that mates right here. Pretty uh, neat systems engineering here, how everything uh, fits together with minimal wiring between. And let's see if we can get this guy out. I see uh, two screws in there. Some more Phillips. This is a very simple compared to if you take apart like a modern uh, Android or iPhone or anything modern it's ridiculous it's impossible to get apart impossible to repair but this it literally took me like 10 minutes not even 10 minutes I was yammering for the first five minutes <laughs> but anyway uh, let's see what we got here uh, lots of discrete chips another thing you wouldn't find on modern uh, devices you'll notice the main uh, what appears to be the main system clock which looks like it's a 6 megahertz um, you'll notice the uh, little tuning fork um, 32 kilohertz watch crystal which uh, keeps the RTC time a uh, little 8 pin chip right there which I would assume would be the uh, RTC because it's so close you need to have the crystal very close to the RTC chip uh, an inductor uh, some supply caps right in there Let's see we got some Phillips chips uh, Fairchild I don't know what that insignia is, but um, they're all labeled LCX, something, something, or another. Um, honestly, no idea what uh, some of these chips do, and I can't be bothered to look them up right now. But um, very interesting, uh, lots and lots of uh, plated vias in there, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. Oh, a date code, handspring, assembled... Um, I guess the third week of 03, or maybe the third month. Either way, it looks like um, probably, honestly, late 90s, early 2000s, when this guy would have been in its prime. Oh, and I just noticed, yeah, actually, the screen isn't the backlight. It appears that, uh, duh, this uh, green sheet is actually the EL backlight. <laughs> Sorry about that as an aside. And um, let's see over here, you have your IR... Um, transmitter and receiver pair with uh, their own decoupling caps the reset button uh, the compact flash cart slot there would have been nice if they just stuck on a SD but whatever and another daughter board uh, let's see if I can pull this without damaging it got some double sided sticky tape the attention to details um, Pretty cool. Ah, let's come back to that in a second. <laughs> let's see what we have here. Inductors, uh, some LT um, chips right in there, which uh, most likely than not is some sort of power regulation. And let's see, two transistors, a diode, yeah, uh, I would assume that's a switching regulator. Probably all this runs off of 5 volts, and how they get it to run off of two uh, AAA batteries is they use a step-up converter. And a Dragon Ball. <laughs> uh, look right here. It is a Dragon Ball EZ MC68EZ328PU16V. Uh, it's, it's some sort of a microprocessor. 
some sort of a processor chip. Um, it it's a Motorola part, and because of the the labeling, it's an MC68. Uh, it's probably some kind of derivative of the old uh, 6800 or 6900 um, MIPS architecture. And um, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. That's the uh, main processor that drives everything. And you got the inner board connector, which uh, mounts to this little daughter board. Nothing on, on here. Um, however, you see, uh, this is interesting. Uh, I This is probably the ROM. It's a handspring. Um, it says uh, revision D. It's probably a custom code. It's probably a mask ROM for the... Um, the operating system basically and then a Samsung chip and this is most de definitely the uh, the RAM and this is probably because there's a little uh, the little uh, super cap in there it's probably battery back so it would lose the memory of course once you pull the batteries but then there's this mysterious little two pin thing in here that's marked 8M and let's just see if I can get in there I just cut my fingernails course and I have no idea what that is actually let's just lift the skirt a little bit I don't think there's anything under this but it doesn't hurt looking yeah nothing so it feels kind of hollow and there are only two pins so I don't know what the heck that could be mystery part I wonder if that actually I think I know now because it's kind of hollow and there are four little holes around there. I think, interestingly enough, that's the speaker. Um, in a very peculiar package. I've never seen anything like it. Um, that's probably the thing that makes those clicks and beeps and whatnot and for the alarms and whatnot. So uh, let's get this all back together, I guess. We're pretty much done tearing it down. I don't think there's anything else interesting uh, left to be said. Now it's just... Uh, me uh, trying to get software on here and modify it, and that's pretty much it. But yeah. So that was actually pretty cool, I would say. Um, don't really see... Uh, you don't see at all, actually, nowadays, uh, this, this type of uh, device and, uh, you know, the integration uh, that they had to do in the, uh, the early 2000s, the... Um, or the late 90s. Uh, everything nowadays is is ridiculously tiny and you know it's made not to be user serviceable in any way or form. It's kind of sad to see um, this type of ease of, um, of assembly and um, repair. But let's put these two screws back in. We're at about 18 minutes. I also picked up a four-port USB hub for like 90 cents today at that thrift store, so eh, I'll figure something I can do with that. So let's get this back in. Come on. Oh, this is going to annoy me, isn't it? It's an interesting zip. This in four screws. You know what? Protect the face plate. <laughs> Put the uh, cover on there. Let's get these in. It's weird, my camera, if I manually focus, it turns autofocus off. And so I'll forget to uh, refocus it. And so, eh. So let's see if this will turn on again, which I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. And there we go. Looks like it's coming on a treat. And. Oh, that's pretty snazzy. It goes on both ways. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know.
Yep, that's that little speaker. I was right about it. That's not the time, but I really don't care. Wait, what? What? Change the date to like 7, 8, 25. Whatever. Done. Pretty cool. These things like run forever off of the, uh, the, uh, the batteries because it's just a monochrome screen and probably this is only clocked at like 4 megahertz or something ridiculous like that. I wonder how you turn on the backlight actually. Probably, uh, preferences. Uh, modem. I wonder if there's a modem attachment. That is interesting. System sound, beam on, auto receive. No, I'm not seeing anything. Owner. Oh, I guess it wiped the memory on that, so whatevs. I wonder how I could, uh, I'm just going to play with this for a little more, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the, uh, the teardown of the, uh, Palm handspring, or whatever you want to call it, handspring visor. Uh, old Palm Pilot that, uh, was back in the day. And it's, a uh, pretty neat, uh, vintage technology here. And so I just wanted to show you guys that. Let's, uh, you know what, I'm only at 21 minutes. Let's, uh, see if I can open this guy. I'm going to use a bigger. Okay, you know what? I need to get a bigger bit. Darn it, why do screws hate me? I think I just stripped it. <laughs> well, you know what? This doesn't work. No loss. There's really nothing in here. Yeah, yeah. That's I stripped it. So whatever. There's really nothing that interesting in here. So that was basically the teardown of the uh, the palm visor. And so if you guys like this, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Hey, I have a quick update here, and I mentioned that this guy here was a compact flash card slot. So I went and I found my microdrive, 4 gig microdrives from my um, iPod minis. And as you can see, it's a bit small. Apparently this isn't quite a compact flash uh, card slide. It doesn't even fit. <laughs> so I was wrong about that. That's probably for the uh, peripheral like modem attachments and whatnot. So unfortunately, that isn't going to fit. And uh, there might be some sort of adapter or something you could buy. Well, back then you could have bought but um, that's that, and I want to show you guys, I'll go into a darker room, I figure out how to turn on the, uh, the backlight. So hopefully this shows up on camera. There you go, it's pretty dim, it's even dim in uh, real life. But you can see uh, it's actually inverted where the pixels are blackened in normal light, it actually lights up here, which is uh, pretty interesting. But it is uh, pretty dark there, but hopefully get you guys could see that. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, all I have to say about that. So it's my uh, you can see my Galaxy S3 there, but <laughs> in the reflection of the screen. But yeah, that's that, and uh, just wanted to clear up uh, some of that. But uh, yeah, so I'll catch you guys around. Bye.